Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about habitable exoplanets. And more specifically, a study that tries to discover how many habitable planets can you have in a single star system. We know that you can have at least three, like in this star system in TRAPPIST-1, can you have more? Let's talk about this and welcome to What the Math. So even after a few years, the TRAPPIST-1 system is still the most exciting star system we've discovered. There are three planets here in the habitable zone of the star system, suggesting that, potentially, they could have liquid water. But the scientists always wondered, why is it that our solar system only has one single planet, planet Earth, in the habitable zone where liquid water exists? The planet Venus is a little bit too close to the Sun, so the water here would not be able to survive. And the planet Mars is a little bit too far, so the water here freezes. At least that's the general idea here. So the scientists behind the paper you can find in the description below decided to simulate and investigate the maximum number of planets, habitable planets, you can have in a single star system with a star very similar to our own Sun. And quick spoiler, you can have up to 7 exoplanets with habitable conditions and liquid water. In other words, hypothetically, we could have seven different Earth-like planets in the solar system, but we don't, we only have one. And the question is, why? Why is it that there's only one Earth, only one habitable planet, yet star systems like TRAPPIST-1 have three, and it's very likely that we'll find many more star systems that have even more. And interestingly, when they simulated this with a regular star like our Sun, many different types of stars, including red dwarfs, K-type stars, and even the larger F-type stars, all could easily maintain five habitable planets. Five habitable planets was a likely scenario for any star system. And the answer why there are no seven habitable planets in our solar system is essentially because they would not be able to survive because of the orbital dynamics. All of the planets here would collide with one another, forming one single object. But why do they collide in our solar system, but not in TRAPPIST-1? Well, you might have already guessed what the real culprit here is. Their simulations uncovered that having a massive planet similar to Jupiter in the star system would always lead to the stabilization of various planets, forcing many planets that were close together to collide with one another, essentially creating either bigger objects or being thrown out into the outer solar system, possibly even into the interstellar space. In their simulations, they also discovered that to have a very stable system, the best situation is to have no giant planet and to have as close to a circle and orbit as you can get for all of the nearby planets. And this way, you could definitely have seven planets placed in the habitable zone around the Sun, and they would stay in this orbit quite permanently for billions of years. But as soon as you add a Jupiter-like object, essentially a massive planet, it starts creating a lot of discrepancies, and here all of these orbits will slowly start destabilizing, first becoming more elliptical, and eventually crossing each other. And if we accelerate time here, you'll see how quickly this starts happening. With time, all of these planets will either collide with one another, or get kicked out. And this simple yet brilliant explanation allows us to understand not only why our solar system only has one single habitable planet, and why certain other star systems like TRAPPIST-1 have a lot more, and so in this case it's probably because there is no other giant planet disturbing all of this, but it also allows us to now narrow down our search in trying to find another star system somewhere out there that might potentially have chances for many different habitable planets to exist around them. And they do identify at least one star system approximately 27 light years away from us that we know for a fact has no giant planets around it, it's also extremely sun-like in its brightness and in its age, and this suggests that if there are planets, they're going to be smaller and potentially have a much higher chance to be in habitable zones of their star system. And the star system they think might have a good chance to have these exoplanets is known as Chara, although the more official name for this star is Beta Canum Venaticorum. The Chara system back in 2006 was selected as the most likely star system to actually have habitable exoplanets. And one of the reasons is because, as you see right here, its age, its size, its temperature, and even its relatively low activity are all extremely similar to our own sun. You could almost call it a sun's twin. 
It's only about 27 light years away from us as well, so this is one of the nearest star to us. But the only problem is that as of today, as of 2020, we haven't really discovered any planets around it. And the reason is very simple. These planets are probably just orbiting in a different way from where we usually look at planets. In other words, they don't really block the starlight from the star itself, so we can't really see them. Because they're orbiting in a different way, we should be able to see them using different methods. But when the scientists used the radial velocity method, they didn't discover anything. This of course suggests that there are no massive planets making the star wobble left and right. And in this case, uh, our sun does have a massive planet, Jupiter, so our sun wobbles quite a lot. This star doesn't. There obviously also have been no direct imaging detections so far, mostly because the planets here are probably really close to the star to be seen. And no other method has been able to detect planets either. And that's actually so far a good sign. It means that if planets do exist in the star system, they're probably really small, possibly similar to Earth and Mars in size, and they also could be relatively far from the star, even in the habitable zone. So not being able to detect planets so far is actually a really good thing. And that's because most of the planets we've discovered so far are usually extreme. They're not the planets we would be able to ever settle. But the reason the scientists behind the study choose this star over other stars is obviously because it doesn't seem to possess any giant planets around it. And with no giant planets to disturb other planets in their orbit, there's a very high chance here that it might even have planets similar to the TRAPPIST-1 system, where all of them are packed in really, really compact but very stable orbits. And this is exactly what the scientists want to find, but not around a red dwarf. They want to find this around a sun-like system. And that's where the Chara system comes into play. If that system has something like this going on, it would be one of the most, if not the most exciting star system in the vicinity. And the best way to find these planets would be to use some sort of a more advanced version of the direct imaging technique. With the only known conceptual craft being able to achieve this is this right here. This is known as the Starshade, a super cool telescope that would be responsible for the direct observation of different stars and planets, but that's unfortunately in relatively early stages of development. It's quite unlikely that we're going to have this operational for at least a decade or even more. But this unusual telescope would definitely be able to see these unusual exoplanets and, of course, planets in the habitable zone of the star system, allowing us to see something like this. Although, as of today, this mission is still in really, really early development and no alternative mission is planned for near future. So whether this particular star has a lot of neatly packed planets as predicted in this paper or whether it has absolutely nothing, only future will tell. For now, it's still one of the most exciting star systems out there and definitely something we need to investigate with some of the future telescopes. Nevertheless, the major discovery in this paper is that a lot of stars should be possessing more habitable planets than we currently expect. Five planets in the habitable zone should be a minimum for most stars that do not possess any large massive planets. And the larger the star, the more planets they should be able to maintain. Which means that larger F-type stars can technically easily have seven exoplanets in their orbit and all of them can be habitable. But until further proof or until actual physical evidence of this, for now this is just a theory. So we're not really going to know whether Chara has these planets anytime soon and we're not going to be able to find more of these unusual exoplanets until we have better telescopes. But I'm actually also going to talk about some of the more advanced imaging techniques, specifically direct imaging techniques, in another video and share this video with someone who loves learning about space and sciences. Also, maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else and potentially support this channel on Patreon because it does help me quite a lot. And you can also support this channel by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can also find it in the description below. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye-bye.